Looking through the billionaires list of today, you'll see that most of the billionaires are largely from the tech industry. And that's why I was so surprised to find this one particular person on the list. His name is Bernard Arnault, and he isn't from tech. He's in fact from the fashion industry. He is currently the chief executive and chairman of the LVMH Group, which currently owns practically all the luxury brands around the world. And his net worth is $186 billion, and the industry of which he presides and spearheads is currently estimated to be over $300 billion. And that really gave me quite a lot to think about, and it perplexed me. Because when you think about the product that really represents this industry, the luxury good, it is truly mystifying. Consider, for example, a white cotton shirt, which you could practically buy for maybe 10 to 30 US dollars. And at the same time, you could have another white cotton shirt, but this time branded the luxury brand on it, and it could run you from the hundreds to thousands. And despite the fact that they are both essentially the same things, with the same sort of utility, perhaps the same material, the other one is priced so much more and people are willing to pay for it. There's a big market for it. I don't, of course, need to bring up really any particular brands, but you can imagine people lining up outside stores on certain drop days to buy some of these shirts. And of course, we can even think about cars in the same capacity where a certain car could cost you maybe $10,000, and yet people are willing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for these supercars that are essentially the same, both cars. Now, some of you might say, well, Melvin, that's because there's a lot of technicality and artistry that goes into some of these luxury goods. They are made differently. They might require really skilled craftsmen and artisans to really create these things. And certainly you'd be right. There might be a totally different production process. It might be made in a boutique way rather than being mass produced. There might be a lot of art that goes into it. But even if you were to factor in the production cost, and the incidental cost that goes into these luxury goods, and you were to add a healthy profit margin, let's say 30%, the ultimate price that they are given is still excessive and detached from the actual production cost. So why is it they're priced this way? Why is it that we are willing to pay for them? And really what is the underlying value and economics behind it? To answer this question, we have to go back into history, into the works of this 19th century American economist his name is Thorstein Veblen, and he wrote this amazing treatise called The Theory of the Leisure Class. He talks about basically in the second industrial revolution in the late 19th century to the early 20th century, there really was a significant change in society. If you think about where we came from in the past in our history, most societies around the world was really quite rigid and fixed. In terms of social classes, we were more or less preordained or it was more or less predetermined for us where we were on any particular pyramid of a social system. You were born into a certain class and you would more or less be in that class and it was very much dictated and beyond your control. But what the rise of capitalism and industrialization really gave way to was in a way a liberation of social classes as society really focused on economic progression and economic power. People who had it quickly escalated on the social ladder. They would have the capital to really access all these resources in society, and that really gave them a lot of power. There was really a rise of this new, powerful social class, the class of these capitalists and industrialists. And Veblen very much looked at this. He talked about how with this new social class that arose, they would have the ability to engage in all forms of consumption. And one of the ways that they consumed, according to Veblen, was conspicuously conspicuous consumption he talked about. It was this idea that really to showcase their social power and really to fix their class in society, they would consume much differently than everyone else. They would consume in a very extravagant and excessive way. They would buy goods and services so much more expensive than the others just for the sake that it is expensive to showcase that they have this perceived prestige and power, whether it is real or not. That was the way it was showcased. And at the same time, because society became very much about consumption, other social classes could also imitate this form of consumption if they wanted to elevate themselves within society, at least in terms of the perception of it. And so Veblen very much predicted consumerist society today, and really this idea of materialism. But of course, he did so 
in the 19th century. But it was really this phenomenon of conspicuous consumption in the late industrialization and the late 19th to 20th century that really gave rise to these industries of extravagance where goods are made and sold for the sake of them being expensive, where the price is high for the sake that the price is high and really targeted at this new accumulation of wealth and really this newfound desire from people of all forms of social classes to increase their social status and perceived social power in society. This is very much the underpinning of luxury goods today, at least an economic and sociological understanding of it. And we can very much see that applying to today when we look at how economic laws function for goods. The laws of economics tells us that price has a significant influence on the demand of goods. And the basic law states that usually if a good is priced lesser than greater the demand, if something is more affordable, people are willing to, to buy it. But of course, there is a equilibrium somewhere. There is a point of balance where you balance the low cost of a certain good as well as the profit you would get from it. But very much these basic laws dictate and influence the pricing strategies and the competitive strategies of businesses of all forms of industries. But when it comes to luxury goods, these laws are turned upside down. As usually with luxury goods, it is the reverse. The higher price a good is, the higher the demand. Whereas if a good was priced lower, then it loses the sense of its luxury and demand actually dissipates in the long term. And that is really very much a reflection of what we're seeing in these businesses today, where you would almost never see any luxury brands doing any forms of discounts because they very much understand that the very nature of these goods being sold is the fact that they're priced expensively. That is the biggest allure of it. They are priced expensively for the sake that they're expensive because they tie in to really this concept that Veblen talked about in his treatise. But really to realize this artificiality, luxury businesses have to go much further because they understand that the intrinsic value of many of these goods might be homogenous with any of their regular equivalents. So they have to create a new form of value that goes beyond the intrinsic value, that builds upon it, an extension of it, if you will. And this is really the economic and business concept of perceived value. Perceived value is this idea where it really is to create the perception of value, that this thing is worth so much because of all this value which we are telling you that it has. And really you don't have to think too intensely about it as you consider the millions if not billions of dollars that are spent every year by these luxury businesses on advertising and marketing to create these cultural, artificial and really these abstract sort of values that reinforces the perceived value that they have and also reinforcing the ideas that Veblen talked about that it really relates to this conspicuous consumption that relates to our social class. And so you see these ads which really present these products as being very aspirational, that they are for people of a certain social class and of a certain milestone in life. And we see the amounts that are being pumped in to get celebrity endorsements, ambassadors, and these people that we look up to in our lives. And really to present the image that this is really something to aspire to own, to possess, to consume. And so really it's very much about perceived value, but aside from perceived value, to also make the perception of luxury goods, to actually realize the perception of these luxury goods, it's also very important for them to artificially regulate the supply. Consider many of the luxury goods from luxury bags to luxury watches. Oftentimes the demand is so great that easily these companies can produce much more of them every year and supply them to the market. And because the demand is so great, many people are definitely willing to buy it. Yet. The biggest reason they don't do so is because they have to artificially restrict the supply and they have to make the entire perception of it real in the sense that it is such a difficult thing to get that it is incredibly exclusive. So you think about the waiting list and usually the qualifying process that certain clientele have to go through when they want to buy, let's say, a certain luxury bag or a luxury watch. It really is to reinforce this idea that what you're buying is truly very different from any of the counterparts on the market and really ties into this idea that this conspicuous consumption is only for those of a very distinguished class in society. Therefore, when we put all of this together, we can see that very much luxury goods are incredibly perplexing by their nature. They really are a man-made market failure in the sense that they just totally throw and distort all these basic economic understandings that we have about goods. 
and their value. They throw all that out of the window. And it's incredible because we don't really challenge it. Today, it's been so ingrained in our society that we just accept it as it is. But truly, these are the reasons of why it is what it is. And that will very much predicted the rise of luxury goods and really the materialism that would be rampant in our society back in the 19th century. Now, if he were alive today, I think he would say, I told you so. But at the same time, he would be incredibly critical because according to Veblen, the danger of the rise of conspicuous consumption is that really we will degrade into a society of access and of waste. These luxury goods, although they are priced expensively, they may not be the best allocation of capital, especially when you could, for example, buy a cotton shirt for a certain amount of money and yet one for a hundred times more. That amount could be better spent elsewhere and could be better utilized in the economy. So according to Veblen, there is a critical component of it. But regardless what's our stance, it truly is very much our society today where luxury goods at its current rate is growing every year and it is growing rapidly through the years. And also the fact that we're willing to pay so much of it is all really this artificial work that represents the great irrationalities that really exist within ourselves as humans. Economics assume that all human beings are rational. We make rational conscious choices, we weigh in pros and the cons and really benefits and the disadvantages to make a decision. But I think luxury goods really shows us how human we are because it really is an instance where the purchase of many of these things is highly irrational, but yet that could be exactly why we're human.